Hi everyone, my name is Marta, I'm a marketing manager and in this video we will learn how to analyze user experience based on heat maps. But before we start, please make sure you subscribe to our channel so you won't miss new videos. So basically heat maps can help you collect the data on how users behave and interact with your website so you can use those insights to improve user experience and other metrics that are relevant to your business. So let's see how it works on a real example. We need to open a Zoplardi account, go to heat maps, clicks. First of all, here we can check uh, some total clicks. We can see the amount of clicks uh, from desktop, from mobile. We can also check sessions without clicks. The higher um, this percentage is, uh, the more dangerous uh, it is for your website. Uh, so we need to dig deeper and understand why uh, uh, why is this happening. Okay, so why we are getting so many sessions without clicks. Also, we can see sessions that were only on one page. Uh, basically, it means uh, bounce rate. Also, um, it is bad to have a high percentage uh, of those sessions. So if, uh, if you see that there are a lot of sessions that were only on one page, you also need to, uh, to find the reasons uh, and to improve this metric. So we scroll down a little bit to page URLs and here we can open a specific page on our website. For example, I opened this one. Uh, so uh, we can see our heat map. And basically, our task is to find two groups of elements. The first group of elements is for users click but they are not uh, like we don't want them to click there and the elements they click on are not really clickable and the second group of elements are the elements we want user to click on but they are not doing it so let's start with uh, first category so we see that there are some tags like news uh, exclusive uh, and we see that people click on those elements but they are not really clickable. So users are not sent anywhere uh, once they click on this tag. Uh, so for us, it can mean that probably we need to create a specific pages on our website well, where we will be collecting uh, all new elements, uh, all new items or all exclusive items. And when users click on this element, they will be sent uh, uh, to a new page or this page can be opened in a new tab where users can check out uh, more items uh, like this, more new items. Um, on or more exclusive items. Next thing is uh, add to wish list and add to the cart uh, buttons. So uh, those buttons, they are not visible from the very beginning. They are visible only after we are hover uh, our mouse on this certain product item. But remember that uh, hovering is not available on mobile. For example, so the users from who are browsing from mobile won't see those elements. Um, and also we see that the amount of clicks uh, for these elements is not that big. So probably not all of the users uh, really understand how it works. Uh, because for example, here we see 38 clicks uh, on the item and only like six, six, uh, two clicks, seven clicks. Uh, so basically the amount of clicks is almost the same as for uh, those stacks that are not clickable at all. So maybe we need to make those elements visible from the very beginning. Next thing is our filter button. Uh, this filter button is really not standard. Uh, so basically user need to understand what is it uh, um, like what this button is for uh, and to open it. Uh, so basically here you know, we just we can check how many clicks uh, were on this filter button and uh, uh, if the amount of clicks is too small we want more users to click on the filter buttons. If you see that for example in total we had uh, uh, 500 users and only 30 users uh, click on the filter it may be uh, too little and probably we can need to uh, we'll need to change this filter button or add some call to actions and or make it stand out so users understand what is it this button for so uh, if you go a little bit down 
we see some elements in the footer basically we don't have to pay attention to every element on the website and analyze it for example like social media uh, icons that are not very relevant or very important but uh, a subscription form is really really important because this is an instrument we need to use for nurturing our customers for making them subscribe to our newsletter so we can send them uh, some promotional uh, emails, uh, send them some discounts or something like that. And we see that only five people clicked here and uh, it is bad, it is a really low number. So this is a good sign for us that we need to move this subscription uh, form somewhere higher so the users can see it and can subscribe uh, to the newsletter. Uh, also, we can enable the scroll depths uh, on the right side here. Scroll depths will give us an understanding, understanding of uh, how long does the user scroll. For example, on this page, of course, uh, here we have a 100% and then we have less, less people scrolling down. For example, here we have 20 and 18% of visits and we have a promotional banner in this section. Uh, so it means that uh, really a small amount of users see this promotional banner. So it is not good to place it close to the footer because there are some selling opportunities in this promotional banner, but basically most of the users don't even realize that we have a new arrivals, that we have some promotions. So it is also good to analyze it based on the uh, scroll depths. So now let's open another page and try to analyze a Unity page. Okay, so here we see a really big picture, big image, uh, and a title, Great Experiences Build Great Brands. There are no call to actions, no buttons. So basically when I open this page for the first time, what I see above the fall above the fold is just a random stock image and uh, uh, one sentence. So it is not good really. This is the first impression, this is the first thing your visitors see. So we definitely need to think about some uh, form uh, like booking a call, uh, requesting a quote, uh, uh, learn more even, even such simple call to action uh, would make a difference. If we scroll a little bit down, we see more elements, uh, everything looks good, nice, uh, okay, but again, the question is, like, uh, what is the goal of all of these elements and where should we go next, like, after we read a specific, uh, specific parts of the uh, information of this uh, website, so there are no call to actions, no forms, no buttons. It is actually bad because our users uh, can uh, close the step and uh, um, bounce back before uh, they understand what's next and where they should go next. So only when we scroll down to the footer, we see a uh, first call to action, have a project call us and we see a button. This button actually is very unclear. What is it meant to do? Like it is the name of a website, but is it for booking a call? Is it for checking some more information? So never do it uh, always right on the button, its main goal. Okay, and one more page that we are going to analyze, I wear. It's also uh, a page from an e-commerce industry. Uh, so here we see uh, glasses, uh, basically here we see that those elements are clickable. We see call to actions, everything is good, free shipping. 14 days pre return. Uh, here we see prices, we see items. Uh, this plus, uh, it will be, it won't show on mobile because uh, uh, it is based on the hovering. So basically, it will be available only on the desktop. But 
actually it is not really clear uh, what does this plus do will it open uh, this product in a new tab will it add uh, like will we add this product to a cart uh, or to a wish list actually there are no um, icons to add the product to wish list or to the cards which is bad online stores should have uh, those um, those icons uh, learn more is also not the best call to actions uh, call to action for checking more items so it's better to write browse more items uh, check more items uh, because basically we're not learning anything new we're not learning more okay here we also had a subscription form it is better than on the other websites it's not placed uh, in the footer but again it is placed uh, um a little bit down so we need to analyze how many subscriptions we are getting from this form and if this amount is too little we may need to move the subscription form a little bit uh, higher or maybe change the messaging uh, to engage more people and make them subscribe uh, also we see here um, some ratings trust pilot uh, uh, it is actually like those ratings they build credibility uh, so it is good to place them somewhere uh, above the fault so the users already see that uh, uh, this store has a really good ratings uh, and if you place them in the footer a lot of people will actually just uh, they will just won't see it and won't realize that uh, you have uh, those ratings so also Remember that you can filter the data in the heat maps based on different user groups, uh, sources, um, uh, the experience uh, a different kind of people get uh, will always build different, their behavior will be different. So always analyze, uh, um, analyze the performance uh, based on different uh, groups. Um, uh, so that's all for now. I hope you enjoy the video and subscribe to our channel to learn more. Have a great one. Bye-bye.